Last month, I had the pleasure of presenting a lightning talk to the Subta community all about ways to organize and get ahead in your subscription box business. If you're not familiar, Subta stands for Subscription Trade Association, and they are the largest community of subscription innovators. I was so honored for the chance to present to their community, and I wanted to share a replay of my presentation with you too. If you're looking to start or grow a subscription box business, subscribe to my channel for tips, training, and all things subscription box business. Now let's dive into five tips for organizing your subscription box business so you can get ahead and stay ahead this year. Tip number one is to identify your big three. Now you can use this concept when you're planning your quarterly projects, monthly projects, or even your weekly tasks. The big three is basically identifying and prioritizing three areas of focus. When we try to do everything all at once, it makes it easy to forget things or to go into overwhelm mode or to really just lose track of our goals and where we're trying to go. So especially if you're a solopreneur or you're running your subscription box with a very small team, narrowing down your focus in this way will help you to make consistent progress. Now, since we're at the top of quarter two, if you haven't already done your quarterly planning and you're looking for a way to narrow down and identify your big three for the quarter, you can ask yourself these three questions. What causes me the most stress right now? What costs me the most money right now? And what's my biggest barrier to growth right now? I have a few examples up on the slide for each of these three questions. So feel free to take a quick screenshot if that's helpful for you when you're going back through to identify your big three. I won't be able to cover each one today, but the idea here is that you answer the question and then create a solution that becomes your focus or one of your big three for the quarter. And spoiler alert, I'm gonna be expanding on the topic of the big three at my presentation at Sub Summit this summer. So I hope that you'll be able to join Join us there in June. Okay, tip number two is find your bottleneck. This is all about identifying the thing that most often holds you up or slows down the next steps in your business. So a few examples could be getting product samples or always waiting on a reply from a certain vendor. We all know the ones. Or not being clear on your monthly rhythm and when you need to design and order your insert cards so that they arrive in time for packout day. Whatever it is for you, it's that thing that happens almost every month that causes you setbacks or slows down your workflow. I want you to identify it and prioritize finding ways to get ahead in that one area. If you can identify what the bottleneck is and then find solutions to create more ease or to simplify it, everything else that depends on that task will become easier and more streamlined as a result. It's kind of like knocking down that domino and creating ease for all the other associated tasks. And I also don't want you to underestimate that bottlenecks can present around mindset as well, because they are very real too. I know for me in the early stages, a lot of my bottlenecks were my own mindset issues and they were really impacting other important tasks that I needed to do in my business. So for this reason, I now know exactly what I need to do to keep strengthening my mindset and to maintain the progress that I've made. Okay, tip number three is communicate often and early. As subscription box owners, we all know that we're dealing with a lot of moving pieces month after month between product vendors, printers, contractors, collaborators. There's a lot of outside partners that are really critical to our workflow and in creating an amazing box each cycle. But these are also the people in our businesses that we have the least control over, you know, their timelines or their turnarounds. And so that's why communication is a key factor in staying organized and getting ahead this year. When you're communicating with your vendors about delivery times for products or contractors about projects or even collaborators around delivering marketing assets, like if you're working with an influencer, for example, it's super important to include clear hard stop due dates in all your messages. We never want to assume that everyone is on the same page. Extra clarity is never going to hurt a situation, but not clearly including those dates can. 
Now, when it comes to products or other deliveries, always ask for an anticipated shipping date as well as when they're going to forward you the tracking details. So when they've given you that information, add it to your planner or your calendar so that when that day arrives, if you don't receive the tracking info, it will trigger an action for you to follow up and ensure that you're still on target. Getting in front of these types of communication gaps can prevent delays in product delivery and in costly project setbacks. Okay, tip number four is my personal favorite, and, and that is the end of week prep. So before you wrap up for the weekend, maybe that's tomorrow if you're working tomorrow, take 30 minutes to look at your planner or your calendar. Start by quickly identifying the top three things that you want to accomplish next week. The first part of this process is to make sure that you're giving yourself enough time to realistically accomplish the things you want to accomplish. For example, if you've got 30 hours worth of work ahead of you or tasks ahead of you, but you only have 15 hours to actually work, like available for you to work, you're going to feel behind because you are behind. So be realistic about the time that you have available to get the tasks done and adjust your priorities accordingly. Now, once you've identified those top three priorities for the week, the key here is to reserve blocks of time on your calendar to get those things done before the week even starts so that you can stay committed to making it happen. Now, this is important because once next week rolls around, there are gonna be lots of things and people vying for your time. But what you're doing with this end of week prep is you're prioritizing your time to do the things that matter the most to you and your business in advance. After you've reserved your time on your calendar, do a quick scan to see if there's anything you can do before you wrap up today to move into those tasks faster next week. When I plan like this, it gives me so much more focus and it really helps me to end one week and start the next feeling prepared and productive. And honestly, it leaves more room for fun um, on the weekends with my friends and with my family without having to think about work because we all need that reset. Okay, tip number five, having a planning system that supports your unique needs as a Subbox owner is going to be an imperative part of staying organized and getting ahead this year. When you have things stored in all different places and sticky notes everywhere, it creates an environment for chaos and it becomes easy for things to slip through the cracks. So you really want to create a space where you can have your main headquarters or your central planning hub. This is the central location where all your planning systems stem from. Not only will this improve your organization, but when you set it up the right way, you'll be able to get more done in less time because you'll know exactly what to work on every time you sit down to work. One of the greatest things about the subscription box model is that we have these cyclical operations, which I like to call our monthly rhythm. This monthly rhythm is made up of all the recurring tasks that need to happen each month. These are things such as sourcing products, ordering your packing materials, opening your cart or your wait list, shipping your boxes, and so on. All of these tasks are done on a recurring basis throughout the year. And yours could include other recurring tasks as well. But this monthly rhythm can become the framework for your workflow. We've created a really easy system for establishing your own monthly rhythm in the subscription box planner. And you can even grab this page from the planner for free by heading to subscriptionboxplanner.com slash monthly cheat sheet. But you can also do this yourself as well by just identifying those recurring tasks that you have and the dates within each month that you need to have them completed by. And then adding those recurring tasks to your planning system gives you a consistent jumping off point for what you need to do each week. It gives you an idea of how much time you have to work on other projects. And it also creates a system that you can expand upon as you grow and bring in team members to help. Okay, so that was all I have for you today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope that these five tips have been helpful for you and that you've been inspired with new ways to get organized and get ahead this year. Thank you so much for watching. If you found these tips helpful, hit that like button and be sure to subscribe. If you want to get a copy of your free monthly rhythm planning sheet, head to the link in the description. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.